anti fucking latency yeah the videos here are gonna talk about uh, the new tracking system the anti latency system and uh, probably gonna touch on a few you know general things about our virtual production studio here the virtual star studios all right friends do you notice something different about me I actually had time to get a haircut I have no bags under my eyes I think maybe no no and I generally feel good I sleep well and I could say it's mainly thanks to our tracking system finally works and it's the anti latency tracking system uh, and you know it works like a dream and that's probably why I try to find a new tracking system uh, other than Vive. Uh, don't get me wrong, the Vive has treated me and the studio very well. We built the whole studio on doing the, the, the tracking with Vive. But uh, as you probably know by now, it has a lot of problems with, you know, drifting and uh, Jitter and it's generally unstable and working in a live TV production that's not something you want to deal with and the main problem I had with the wire tracking is that I spent so many hours in front of every production to just calibrate it, recalibrate it and you know on the day of the shoot it didn't matter that I calibrated yesterday, I have to recalibrate it because the orientation flipped and uh, I, I spent way too much time on it and uh, that's why I started to look at some other solutions. I of course looked at Moses and Stipe, they are excellent systems but they are way out of, of my price range. It wasn't uh, decent options for me and that's why we're really happy to thanks to my friend uh, Johan Folke at 20 Studios who talked about you know there's some Russian guys they made some really cool virtual reality VR uh, tracking that's better than Vive so like three months ago we started to really look into uh, buying the the ant latency tracker uh, and when we got it it was just in two boxes, it was really small, and we got the ceiling version. And I heard that uh, mounting uh, the ceiling uh, could be really hard, and that's why they recommend using a you know a Armstrong system, which is similar to an inner ceiling that you have in in your regular office, with you know the, the tiles, the 60 by 60 tiles. Uh, uh, which makes it easier to put uh, uh, markers up. And the system works by having uh, infrared markers uh, in special uh, locations uh, all over the ceiling. And then on the uh, cameras you have uh, a tracker. And on the tracker you have a small camera that's really wide, ang uh, wide angle. It's kind of similar to Stipe and uh, Moses, uh, except that you actually have uh, real infrared uh, lights instead of having the trackers send out infrared, uh, infrared light. The challenge of putting it up was that use the antilatency system builds on that the tracker looks at the already made blueprint uh, and compares it to the physical space to find to really look into where uh, the tracker is in the volume. Uh, so that's why you have to mount uh, e uh, infrared markers really precisely. And that's what the uh, Armstrong inner ceiling really helps with. And if you could go up, uh, Kalle, to show the ceiling. And this is uh, how our ceiling looks. Uh, we, if you ha already have a ceiling that's flat, it's probably no big deal to mount it. But since our ceiling is kind of slanted, uh, we had to build uh, a totally new floating inner ceiling where we could put the Armstrong uh, ceiling under. Uh, and that was uh, quite hard, but it, that's not on the anti latency system. Uh, but now we got it up and it works beautiful. Uh, you can really trust the system and uh, yeah, I sleep good now uh, nowadays. <laughs> 
Uh, and we did one big show uh, just recently, the first big show uh, with the new system. And of all the problems you could have during the day, tracking was not a problem. Uh, and that's, uh, that's good. And everybody said that because we did the show uh, last year with them as well, with the Vive system, where we had a, a lot more jumpiness and stutter, uh, and we had none of that now. And, and the ceiling looks really cool, actually. So that's great. Uh, so basically how this works is that you have, you put the trackers on the camera, similar to the Vive tracker. And I chosen to uh, use a cable all the way up to the control room and plug it straight into the computer, which makes for a more reliable uh, signal. Uh, and then it's just pretty much good to go, because uh, Aximetry, which I use as a uh, virtual production software, uh, just finds the tracker and you can just use it like you use a regular Vive tracker in, in, uh, inside the, uh, Aximetry. And the good thing about this system is that it's stable, because it always, every time I come in every morning, the system, the cameras are at the same place. You don't have any orientation problems and you can really lock in to the 3D world, uh, which is perfect and something that you want. Uh, and the fun thing is that you have, the small trackers are also able to be run on uh, Wi-Fi. So that means that you could track, put a tracker on, on the talent and have a billboard track, track you around. So you can walk in front and backward, back of uh, 3D stuff. And uh, you can also use it in your hand to do stuff. We've been trying it out with some virtual drums or you know, doing produ product demonstrations where uh, the talent can just uh, point in the air and have things happen. Uh, and that's pretty cool. And it's really small and really robust and a really good looking thing. So you can easily have it in, in your hand on the camera. And it's super easy to set up when you're using several cameras, uh, in, at least in Eximetry, where we use the multi-machine. It's one camera and one computer. So I just run each tracker to a separate computer and uh, Eximetry finds the tracker and it's no problem. It's super easy to set up. Uh, and the calibration of, you know, the, uh, the position of the tracker compared to uh, the sensor and to have the camera really calibrated in space, it's, uh, it's also easy because you don't have the orientation problem. And uh, it's so small and it's easier to mount, mount on the camera than, uh, than having a wipe tracker who's really bulky and you don't really know where the pivot is on the, on the wipe tracker, I guess. But this is super, super easy. And we did some, uh, <clears throat> some other upgrades to the studio to make things easier. And I think that also, also helped me to get a better calibration of, of, the, uh, of the virtual cameras and the physical cameras. Because we bought uh, two new uh, Canon lenses with uh, servo zoom, which are the Canon uh, CN uh, 18 to 70mm and the Canon CN uh, 80 to, I don't know, how, how much is that? 70 to 120 or something. And it works great, especially since now we uh, got the uh, glass mark working, uh, which are the lens encoders, which can send uh, the lens signal or the lens uh, values over to the virtual camera. I had the glass mark for a, for a while, but I couldn't get it, get it to work uh, confidently uh, without stutter on our uh, network system. But now uh, he, uh, Andy from Lowlight Virtual, who are doing the excellent glass mark encoders, have released an update where you can uh, run the encoders via cable all the way up to the computer, which means we have no stutter at all. We just got to work in today with the new update, but we need to uh, calibrate the lenses, uh, all the different uh, focal lengths to get it really exact. exact. But uh, finally, we have a good working setup with everything. Uh, 
So we used the uh, ant latency as tracker. We used the glass marker encoders to get the focal and lens data into the computer. And we use eximetry uh, for everything software-wise. And one more thing we did to an update is to buy an Atomos Shugan Studio 2 to record both uh, the comped images and we can also record the clean signal because sometimes you want to change some stuff after you record it. And th th then it's good to have a cl clean signal of just the uh, green screen as well. I also had a chat with Ant Latency because before we bought the whole system, I wanted to be sure that we don't buy into dead space or dead gear. And they are really glad of the virtual production community and they are uh, now looking really going head first into making ant latency work really great for virtual production. Uh, and it's already working great, but now that they have their eyes open for it, they are really going to put some effort into making it even more better for us in the virtual production space. Uh, <clears throat> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> the one guy who uh, built this roof is uh, Kalle and he's a master engineer, which is great. So he, he has a lot of good friends who uh, helped us with the solution. He did a really great, solid, solid job, solid job. Uh, should I mention how we did uh, the markers? Yeah. Could I, have we here? All right, so one of the big problems, uh, no, no, not big problems, challenges, is uh, that the, uh, infrared markers need to be put precisely on the millimeter spot for the system to work uh, flawless. And what, what Ant Latency recommends is that you take the tiles and go to a CNC cutter and CNC the holes. That's probably easier, but we didn't know any CNC guy who could do it. Or, or actually we did, because we, we had a CNC guy <laughs> do this. And this is uh, Kalle's invention, which is just two, uh, two holes where we should put all the... So we could... What do you call it? Zoom! So we could drill the holes in the tiles at precisely the correct spot and have them aligned all through the roof. Uh, and uh, this made it really quick. And I think we, we did the setup, except for building the inner ceiling, but for setting up the ant latency uh, system, it took two to four hours, maybe. Four hours with dr uh, doing all the holes, putting in the markers, and doing all the uh, uh, making all the cables to the infrared markers, and ca uh, th th that's it, I guess, and putting up the ties. And we had 72 markers. So it's, it's, not, it's not a hard setup. And then uh, after everything was done, I just plugged everything, in, turned everything on, and put uh, a tracker on the camera, and it just, boom, worked. Uh, so I'm quite happy. And I, I guess together with the glass mark encoders, you have everything you need to do great virtual production. And I don't know what more to say. And uh, what I can say more, they have two versions. We have the ceiling version, but they also have a floor version, uh, which are pretty much already made tiles that you can walk on with the markers in. And it's not really suitable because we want to use the floor, of course. But we could probably made do with just the floor version. But uh, since we want to track the talents as well, it's really good to have the tracker back here so the talent can walk around with the billboard. Uh, and that's it. I don't know. I thought I was going to like burn a wife tracker or something, but actually, wife tracker did me good for two years. It was quite amazing. And, uh, but now we moved on and uh, have a better system and can make better stuff and focus more on uh, doing the creative side more than calib just calibrating all the fucking time. So 
So check it out. Uh, I'm going to be in the comments and uh, hope you got your information and uh, what I think about it. That's all, folks. Glad you checked in and uh, keep rocking. Can you say keep rocking? Is that corny? Fuck. All me is corny. <laughs>